Hello, this is the IGCSE ICT exam from 2014 and it's the practical exam. I'm going to start here on activity 1 and it tells you Philip has set up a spreadsheet to calculate income from bicycle rentals. He has called the spreadsheet Cycles. Now this is the name of the spreadsheet as you can see here on top. The spreadsheet has two worksheets, income and group. And here at the bottom you can see we're on the income. There's another one called group, but we're going to be on the income one to start with. The income worksheet shows the number of bicycles rented each week in April. Sort the data so the bicycle types are in ascending order. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the table with the titles. And then we are going to go to the home tab. And there is a button called sort and filter. So I'm going to press it. And we're going to try the custom sort. It's easy to do. And if you were supposed to sort on more than one column, then this is the perfect place to be. But we're going to select the bicycle type. And it's supposed to be in ascending order, A to Z. So this is correct. And I select OK. Now we've already done the first task. Next task says, Philip. Philip wants to know the income for each bicycle type and the total income. Enter a formula to calculate the total number of rentals of the first bicycle type. Now here's the first bicycle type. Here are all the rentals and we need to find the total. A very simple method is to click and drag over these values and have an empty field here selected also and click the auto sum. Another method of doing this is, I'm going to delete this, is writing the formula. Equals sum, as we're going to add a few numbers, we select all the values, which is called range reference. Sorry, we're going to open a bracket first. We click and drag over the values, and now I can press enter already. So, different method, but the same thing, you get the correct formula over here. Next it tells us, enter a formula to calculate, no, replicate, no, I'm on the right one. Enter a formula to calculate the income from the first bicycle. So we know this is a total of rentals, and now we need the income. How do we calculate the income? We know how many bikes were rented, and we know the rental charge. So yes, we're going to write equals, and that's the way all the formulas start. And we're going to click on the rental charge and we're going to multiply it with the total of rentals. Then we can press enter. And this just means that the column isn't big enough. So I'm going to double click and here we see the value. Then it tells us replicate the formula for the other bicycle types. To replicate formula, we click on it and the square we pull and drag down when we're over it. Do the same thing for the income and we click and drag down. Then it tells us enter appropriate headings for the new columns. Now appropriate heading, we know this is income, so we're going to write there income. And this could be total rentals or just total. Then it asks us, enter a formula to calculate the total income for the month. We see that it says your total income, so here we're going to put our formula. Always start with equals. Now we are obviously going to see the total from all the income from all the weeks for each bike. So we write sum and open a bracket. We're going to select all the values and then we can press enter without closing the bracket. And here we have the total income. Now this was task SS2. And then it tells us, print the income worksheet on one side of A4 showing the formula. Now, to show the formula, we have to be in formula view. We go to formulas and we select show formulas. This is formula view. But it looks like that the screen we can minimize the column so we can see it on one screen or we can see it on one A4 paper. Meaning we need to minimize the columns. To do that, it's enough to double click on the border. Another way of doing it is we can select all the 
columns or all the fields and double click in between and it will give us the exact size where it shows the formula. Now we're ready to print it, so we would go to File and Print. And we can see the preview and we should always do that first. Now we can never print without adding our footer which gives your name and your center number and the candidate number. So we're going to go to Page Data. We're going to go to Sheet and there we're going to select uh, if they tell you to show grid lines, you would tick here. If they tell you to show row and column headings, which are these, you also tick here. But for the header and footer, you would have to customize the footer. So custom footer, and here you would put in the information, and then they appear here at the bottom. I'm going to cancel this for now. And then you would be able to print. And you can see all the formula comes up. So task SS2 is finished. Next thing is, Philips wants a chart to show the number of rentals of each bicycle type for each week in April. The chart must be fit for purpose and have a suitable title and access labels. So to create a chart, I'm going to go back to normal view. So we click show formula again. We're going to increase the size again. So I'm going to click and drag and then double click in between. So we can see this perfectly. Now we must show for each bicycle. So I'm going to select the bicycle type and include the heading. Then it wants all the weeks of April. So we're going to hold control while we select all the weeks and the values. Now we're ready to select the chart. So we go to insert. We click on column. You can choose any chart you would like. I'm going to choose this one. And here we have the chart. Now you can never show a chart like this. And it does tell you to be fit for purpose. So you will need labels. An easy method is to select the chart layouts over here. And uh, this one is a good one because it shows uh, all the weeks are here. It's got the chart title and it's got the vertical and horizontal labels. And then we have to find out what would be the perfect title. And we know this is for the bicycle type. So easy. We will write here bicycle type. And then here are the totals. So a perfect, or you could say rentals even. So I'm going to select this title and just write here rentals. Chart title has to be descriptive for what this chart is showing us. And then you can look at the activity. It says, shows the number of rentals of each bicycle type for each week in April. So this could be bicycle rentals in April. And here we have it, the chart that is fit for purpose and has a suitable title and access labels. This was task SS3. Then it comes to task SS4. It says, the company rents bicycles to community groups. Philip has created a worksheet to be used as an invoice to send to group organizers. Formula need to be entered for the calculations on the invoice. And then it tells us, enter a formula to calculate the cost for the Dirt Buster bicycle type. And underneath it has in brackets, rental charge times number required. So they're telling us how to calculate this. First, we need to go to the group worksheet, and there we're going to calculate the cost. So we're here where it says cost. There we do rental charge, but to start the formula, of course, equals. So we are asked to multiply rental charge with the number required. So multiplication, number required, enter. Very simple. The next task tells us replicate this formula for the other bicycle types. And as always, you click and drag from the corner and you replicated the formula down the row, down the column. Enter a formula to calculate the total cost. So here would be the total cost. Most simplest method is to select all the values in an empty field and the auto sum. Did I select it? Auto sum. 
I think so. If I click in here, I can see that it is summing up cells D17 to D22. So that's correct. Then it tells us a discount is given if the total cost is 300 or more. Now this question tells us we need an if formula because a discount is given if. Now the dis so the discount is supposed to be an if formula. So the total cost is 300 or more. We know that here we have the total cost. All these numbers added up give us the total cost. And if this cost is more than or equals to 300, then we get the discount. And it tells us the discount is in cell F27. So I'm going to write the formula. And it always starts with equals. We know it's an if formula, so we write if. And then we op open a bracket. We can see here the logical test. And we were told that if the total cost, so I'm going to click here, if this cost is more than or equals to 300, then something will happen. And as you can see, there's a comma here, so I'm going to add the comma. Value if true, what happens? Yes, we get this discount. So we select the value, we multiply it with the discount, and if this is false, then of course we get no discount, which is zero. And then we can press enter or close the formula, close the bracket, and enter. And here you can see the formula, how it should look like. Then we are told, enter a formula to calculate the invoice total. And we know to get the total, we will have to deduct the discount from the total cost. So we're going to write a formula that does that. Equals so that should be D23, the total cost, and we deduct it from the discount. So we can click here for the discount and enter. Then it tells us to print the invoice showing the formula. Again, we go to formulas and show formula. And as we can see, this, the column sizes are too big, so I'm going to minimize them so we can fit this on one page. And you can do this for all the columns. Now if we press Control p on the keyboard and the preview, we can see the formula and everything fits on one page. Then it tells you uh, the worksheet needs to be formatted so that it is fit for purpose as an invoice. Format the worksheet so that currency values are formatted to show the currency symbol and two decimal places. So after we've printed this out, we do the next activity. We are going to show, take out the show formula. And we can open this all up. Remember how we did it before? And so all the values are formatted to currency and two decimal places. Now, here we have cost as a value. All these is a value, so we're going to get the currency. So, home, we can here click the arrow down and see what's on offer. Yes, should be pound. So, we select this, and we're going to open the cell all the way. And then, we are told two decimal places, which is here. You can increase decimal places or decrease. You can also right click and go to format cells and choose this from the window that comes up. Taking a little while now. But you can't see anything here because you haven't entered any number. So this spreadsheet has not been edited. Now, it tells us here it has two decimal places. We've got the currency to pound, everything's okay. Now it tells us that Philip wants to check that the invoice is fit for purpose, so we're told to enter data. And this is very important. Make sure that you have all the spelling and grammar correct and do exactly what it tells you. If you have capital letters, then use capital letters. If there's a space between postal code, then you add the space. Now I'm going to write this in also. So 
group details, we're supposed to say organizer is Mrs. And her name is Francesca Gorst. And the group name comes down here. Okay, this is a little waste of time for you to go through all this, but make sure always when you type in that everything is typed exactly as it appears on the paper. Then uh, the cost or number of bicycles required, first one was 7, the next one was 4, the next one is 6, 4, 6, 4, 5, and 4. Okay, now we've got all the numbers and then you can see that the values are entered. Then you're supposed to print this on a portrait, A4, and only showing columns A to D, meaning A, B, C, D are the only ones that get printed. Now you would go to Control P to print it. You can see the print preview, and you can see in this case it's printing much more than we need it. So I'm going to close the print preview, and I'm going to teach you another method of doing this. So we're going to go to print, and we're going to select this option over here. And instead of saying active sheet, we're going to choose the selection, because I did select the data, the correct data before. And then it sends only what you've selected to the printer. And then we are supposed to display the group worksheet on the screen in data view. This is data view. Then you would print screen, pressing print screen on the keyboard. As it says, take a screenshot of the worksheet. Then you open another document. And you're supposed to say why this invoice is well presented and fit for purpose. And if you're supposed to format it so it's fit for purpose, we could do some shading. For the numbers for example so that we will do over here where do we have the shading we can do it here choose a light color so the numbers can be displayed very well you can add borders so here if we want the total cost a double bottom border would be good and then we can have as we know this is an invoice and that should be clear you can open the cell, increase the cell size, so you can see this better. So it's clear that it is an invoice. You can also uh, change this all to bold. And uh, many ways of formatting the spreadsheet, but you can also have all the titles in bold. And that's normally what we do. And now this would be fit for purpose. So if I press print screen now, I open a Word document, press Ctrl V on the keyboard, and now you can see how it comes out. I did it accidentally twice. Now I go to Picture Tools, we're going to crop this image and only show the invoice. And you're supposed to annotate and say why you formatted it like you did and the reason why. And it's you would put the heading in bold so it's simple and easy to see. You have here double border where the total is to show exactly where the totals appear and maybe the invoice total should have been bold also and this number underlined. But apart from that, this is how the spreadsheet part of the exam was and I think it went very well. Thank you. Bye-bye.